transmit it. So let's take a look at an ISF and how setting up an ISF and, and, and creating one works. First you press that Create ISF button and you get the header screen. Only two parts in our system to set up an ISF and transmit, the header and the entity screen. So the header screen looks like this. First box, the reference box there, is a number that we're going to set up and identify for billing purposes your ISF. So if you put nothing in there, we're going to populate it with a sequential number. But we're also going to give you the opportunity to put in a number of your choice. And this has become very popular because customers like to use a PO, customer reference number, and an invoice number, or something that allows them to internally identify that ISF when they set it up and transmit it. So you've got the opportunity to do that there. Now some importers, uh, as we mentioned earlier, you can import, uh, you can file ISS for a number of different tax ID and importers. So that's what you see here. We've got two importers in the system, and once they're entered, once that information is entered in the back end, you now can just click one or two letters and you just get a quick Google drop-down. Which one are you looking for today, Greg? I'm looking for importer test company. I click on that and it fills in that information that's on the back end for me and auto-populates the screen. Very nice time saver sets up the importer consignee and the bond associated with that ISF. Now, you want to you copy that ISF once it's complete and a status message? You can do that. Click these boxes here and you'll get an email as soon as that occurs and you get a message back from CBP. You're busy, transmit it, move on to other things, boom, that'll send it right to you. Now, you may have other parties you want to email as, as well, either a copy or, or a status. You can do that here by just filling in their name. Now, one of the things we mentioned a little earlier is we've got a very active user group. Uh, once a month, everyone gets on the line, and we exchange ideas, successes, best practices for how people are engaging with TRG Direct. Very helpful, and if you become a customer, we certainly want you to be part of that group because I think you'll learn a lot, as well as getting some information from us uh, updated uh, on what's going on at CBP and the trade. Uh, and, and so what we'll tell you is that, is that we're always listening to you and that this application is a living and breathing thing. So if you've got ideas, and we hear that idea a couple of times, we can, we can get in and we can adjust the program. One of those ideas was an optional opportunity to put in a lading date and an arrival date. And people wanted to do that because it gives them a, a, another search item when they're looking for and making sure that they've transmitted things on time. So it might look like this. You come in in the dashboard and you say, I want to see everything that was set up on May 5th or earlier. I do that and I click it and guess what? I see all my ISFs that were set up and I can go, wow, I got a couple that weren't transmitted. Now, obviously my dates are a little off now since we're well into June, but I think you get the message. Just another opportunity to put that information in. So let's take a look at an ISF that's actually been completed so you can see how this information looks all set up. Jumping back here to the header screen, I've got my import test company set up. This is invoice number 663. I put some lading date information in, but the mandatory information, of course, is the bill of lading information. You're going to have to enter your carrier code. The system is going to default to a containerized opportunity, but if you travel with non-container, you can click that down as well. And Customs wants to know what the lowest bill number you're traveling under is. So if it's a straight bill, great, looks like that. But if you're traveling under a house bill, you're also going to be given the opportunity to reference a master bill as well. So carrier code, what's the bill number? SCAC number and bill, an actual bill number. I'm sorry, bill number type. Uh, and then the SCAC and actual bill number, and you're done. Save changes. Now I'm onto the entity screen. So you can see with those drop downs and that information in the back end, boom, that's about a 10 or 15 second uh, entry process there. Now let's look at the entity screen. And this is the six additional pieces of information uh, that Customs requires. Selling party, buying party, ship to, stuffing location, consolidator, and the manufacturer. Now with all this information, we want to make it as easy for you as possible to enter this. So when you enter it one time, the system is going to remember it because you've got the full name and the full address down there Next time you come in, it would be nice to have either a Google drop-down or have the system remember it. So if I come in and I want to change this to the James family, type in J-A-M, and it auto-populates the screen for me. It remembers from the last time I entered it, and now, boom, three letters, and it fills it out. 
Now, you might say, well, Greg, you know, my shift to party is the same as my buying party. That makes sense. What's well, a quick way to do that? Well, here's a copy from feature that we have in here as well. So I'm going to copy from, and let's assume that my ship to party was blank at this point. I'm going to copy from my buying party, just one, two clicks. There I go. Auto populates the screen for me. So I think you get the message. Either typing it in, getting a quick drop down, a couple of letters will fill that in for you, or you can use the copy from function, and you're going to be able to fill these entities in very quickly, very efficiently. And that also adds to your to your to uh, uh, to the accuracy of the information because when you enter it once accurately, now the next time you're just using a, a drop down or a copy from, so you're not going to get a typo. It's going to be the same every time. That's very nice from a risk management standpoint as well. Now under the manufacturer screen, in addition to that name and address, you've got to put in the tariff code, the HDS number, and the country of origin. So there's a couple of different ways to do that. First one is just a quick drop down. Looking for Cameroon. What's that? Well, there it is, Cameroon. I click on it, and it fills in CM for me. Now, if you're entering your tariff codes manually, that's not a problem either. You enter it one time, and the system's going to remember. So the next time you come in, you just type in one or two numbers. It'll go down and say, well, you're looking for this particular tariff code. Yes, I am. Click on it. It fills in the whole number for me. Very nice feature. Now, here's an even nicer feature. If you have your, your parts list set up so that you've got a part number, an associative tariff code and country of origin, you're going to be able to upload that directly to TRG Direct. <clears throat> and once you do that, now all you have to do is go to the parts list, type in one or two numbers, click on the drop down. Is that what you're looking for, part number? Yes, it is. Watch my tariff code, country of origin. Auto fills in for me. Now we can really go fast. Bring in atomic reactors. They won't be set up for exam. Click, fills it in for me. You also have an unlimited number of product codes that you can put in here. Tariff code, country of origin, unlimited. There's no additional charges, no, no, no additional fees. If you've got 100, that's no problem. What we want to do is provide you with the fastest way to get this done. So you, uh, again, you can just keep zipping down here, two or three numbers and it auto-fills in. So I think you get the message there. Now, some of you are probably looking off to the right, and you see some shaded in options for entry. And what we've done here, getting back to that opportunity to bring this information back to your customs entry, you can fill this in if you'd like. It's optional. But if you do, now when you go to make that customs entry, you can drag that invoice information over, and it auto-populates into your customs entry. Very popular, very nice feature. You can do it uh, in, in aggregate or as much information as you'd like to put in there. What we're trying to do is make that easy so you don't have to type it again and do that. So that's why you see.